you are watching this video because either you or someone in your family has been diagnosed with cancer. This video is intended to provide preliminary information regarding cancer treatments. In radiation oncology, you will meet a team of professionals, including the radiation oncologist, radiation therapist, the nursing staff, as well as medical physicists. They will all work together in providing the best individualized care for your condition. You may receive treatment at any of the cancer centers within the Mount Sinai network. Receiving radiation treatment is a multidisciplinary effort from nurses, radiation therapists or technologists, behind the scenes physicists and dosimetrists uh, do extensive work in helping the radiation oncologists devise the treatment, maintain the quality of the equipment and the radioactive materials. So radiation consultation, like a consultation with most other physicians, involves first intake uh, with a nurse to review medications, past medical history, allergies, and then a review with the physician about the more specific details of what's been going on that led up to this point, how they were diagnosed, what types of tests have been done, what kinds of treatment have been done so far. And then the physician and the patient and family, if they have accompanied the patient, will review what the recommendation might be. Is radiation indicated in this situation? If so, what type of radiation? How would it be done? What kind of side effects to expect? And what are the successes and what are the potential complications? Radiation therapy is an important part of the treatment of cancer. Radiation is beams of energy that can be aimed at a tumor within the body to kill it. Uh, there are two ways radiation can be delivered to the tumors. One, externally, where beams are shined from outside of the body at the tumor or implanted in or near the tumor. Either way, these energy beams are targeted to tumors to kill them. Brachytherapy involves the administration of radioactive materials within the patient to treat cancer that, again, the physician will prescribe. But in this case, we have to make sure that at all points during the treatment and afterwards that we know exactly where all the radioactive material is and that it is administered in the safest possible way and that no excess radiation is given to anybody or any area that does not that is not intended the simulation process is the process through which the radiation oncologist designs the radiation treatment. That is to say, uh, we need to know exactly where the tumor is within the body and what its relationship is to normal tissues. We need a patient to be able to lie comfortably for a treatment session uh, and reproducibly. So we have the patient come in for a special session where we develop the positioning of the patient and take an image, uh, that is a CAT scan, of the tumor and the internal normal tissues nearby so that we can develop this treatment plan. The patient will be lying in, on a treatment table. Uh, some type of uh, immobilization device might be used to make them comfortable. The role of the radiation therapist is to introduce the patient to treatment and what treatment will be like. Um, we get the patient ready for treatment in the simulator. We ensure that they're in an accurate position. We work alongside with the radiation oncologist and the radiation physicist to create an individual treatment plan for the patient. Once the simulator process is done and they have a follow-up appointment, they come in and start their individual treatment every day on the treatment machine. Treatment planning is the phrase used to describe how the radiation oncologist, along with his physicist and dosimetrist, figure out the best way to treat a particular patient. After the simulation process, the CAT scan that has been done is used to determine this. Sometimes this involves uh, contrast, which would involve blood tests, uh, question air about allergies and different things like this. We make sure that's all done so the patient can be safe and ready for their simulation. Other patients receive also multimodality therapy with um, medical oncology, which also requires multiple appointments, often on the same day, 
um, and we make sure that those flow smoothly and they have all the appropriate uh, testing and imaging that they need so that they can proceed. Software has the capabilities of doing a virtual treatment. So the radiation oncologists and the dosimetrists and physicists can say to themselves, here is the tumor, here are the normal tissues I need to protect. What is the best way? What angle? What shape should the beam be? How much time should the beam be on? How should I move the patient? All variety of manipulations can be done to optimize the planning for that particular patient and how the treatment is done. That process of developing an individualized plan for that patient is called treatment planning. The basic role in for physicists is to make sure that the correct amount of body tissue is simulated during the scan. Other essential aspect of the physics role is to make sure that the isocenter, which is the center of external beam treatment, is correctly placed during the simulation and transferred to our treatment planning system so that our treatments can be optimally created and that our localization of our tumor is as precise and accurate as possible. So weekly management involves the care of the patient during the week of treatment. The patient typically is treated on a daily fashion, once a day, five days a week, uh, for several weeks, although that can vary. But in that typical kind of regimen, the patient will be treated daily and will see his nurse and radiation oncologist at a minimum of once a week. They will meet their radiation therapist. They will use the position that they were given in the simulation process. The marks will line up with the molds and the positions that the therapist put them in and they will treat them on a daily basis. We meet you initially at consultation and we start our teaching then. We uh, see you on a daily basis. Uh, we also see you weekly, formally, with the physician. We call this our status check day, and that's our official day to check in with you to make sure that you're feeling well and you're not um, having pain or um, difficulty eating or losing weight, things like that. Uh, and the, the nurse practitioner sees you more often than once a week. We're there every day and often will see you every day so that if you happen to be feeling well on the day that you saw the doctor and something comes up later in the week, we can, you can let us know and we can help you with that and address the issue and hopefully take care of things before they really become a problem for you. The purpose of the markings are to ensure accurate treatment for the patient and the setup. Radiation cannot be smelled, it cannot be seen, so if the tattoos weren't present, the therapist would not know where to set the patient up. The patient's markings do not go away. They are permanent tattoos done by the therapist. They are superficial markings under the skin done with a needle and ink, but they are forever. And during that visit, uh, side effects will be reviewed, what to do about them, how to manage them, if there are any will be reviewed, any blood tests that need to be done, etc. cetera, uh, whatever the patient might need. Uh, and that's done, as I say, once a week at a minimum. Uh, depending on the patient's needs. The side effects of radiation are very site specific. So depending on the body area being treated, the symptoms would be referable to that, the side effects. Two general ones are fatigue and skin changes. Uh, these are uh, expected. They vary in degree depending on the patient and, and the treatment, but they're very much uh, treatable. We have ways to help you deal with that. And uh, we, it's important that you tell us when they're happening and and becoming a problem for you so that we can help you deal with that.